Are you a homeowner considering making a move in today's real estate market? Well, today we are going to explore all about the realities of selling your property and how to make sure you win and achieve your real estate goals in today's market. Hello and welcome back to the Happy House Hacking Podcast, the podcast designed to help young people in California navigate the path to happy home ownership. On today's episode, we are going to be going over helping people sell homes and what to expect in the selling process. And so uh, our goal is to help you win in achieving your goals. And sometimes that involves selling a property in order to make a move into your next happy home. So realistic seller expectations. I think that that's something that's super important that we come across every day, Camille. So um, yes. what would you say is is most important for, for sellers to, to start to think about as they may be entering the market as a seller? Well, we're seeing a lot of people need to have realistic expectations in general. And our last episode was all about buyer expectations. And now we want to set the stage for seller expectations because although we are in a very strong seller's market, it doesn't necessarily mean that your dream price of what you want to get is going to be what your house sells for. So we really want to stress the importance of basing your expectations in the truthful reality of today's market. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so this is going to be a real talk conversation where we dive deep into the nitty gritty of how to successfully sell your house and not have your emotions get out of check but to navigate that roller coaster ride of a real estate transaction and succeed while doing so. So today in our in our county, we have about two to two and a half months supply of homes available. So what that means is if there were no new homes listed on the market today, it would take two to two and a half months for all of those homes to sell. That is such a short amount of time. <laughs> there are so few homes available and buyer demand is high. And that's why we're seeing homes sell very quickly for at least a hundred percent of the asking price with hardly any concessions. Right. So that's kind of where we stand today. So if you are thinking about selling, keep that in mind because there is um, little competition. You mm -hmm. know, we don't have an influx of homes available on the market. So you have little competition. There's a good chance you'll get at least two offers on your house, if not more, mm -hmm. if you are pricing it well Correct. and making your home show ready. So those are, mm -hmm. those are some of the main factors that we're seeing in today's market. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with Sellers not able to sell because they have an amazing interest rate because they refinanced a few years ago or they just purchased. So um, they have that rate lock effect. Um, they also maybe don't know where they're going to go next. Mm -hmm. So sellers aren't as motivated to sell right now as they were a few years ago. So if you are thinking about selling, it is a good time because there isn't a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, another demographic shift we're seeing that's affecting the inventory is that seniors are choosing to age in place, meaning they're not selling their house, downsizing as often. They're not going into care facilities as often as they used to because now there's the option of at-home care. And so the average time someone stays in a house has extended. And because of that, there's less inventory. So you have the rate lock effect, you have people aging in place, new construction not happening fast enough and then you have household formation peaking with millennials forming homes having babies they want a home and so they're buying they're trying to buy up homes but there's just not enough still yep yep so when you when you do want to sell it's important to start with a game plan right mm -hmm. why are you selling in the first place where are you trying to go are you selling an investment property in order to buy another investment property? Or are you wanting a vacation home or a second home? Mm -hmm. Or are you looking for a new primary residence where you need to upsize or downsize? It's important to be crystal clear about what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to determine whether or not you're selling your house contingent upon you finding a suitable replacement property, because that is another layer that's critical to define on the front right. end of a transaction. Yes. And in most cases, a traditional seller 
is also a traditional buyer. And so while they may be listing their house for sale, they're also relocating, buying another house. And so the inventory effect, it's almost like a net zero. There wasn't really a, an additional unit added to the market inventory because they're selling to buy something else. So uh, the that that's a really big question. What is your strategy? And it's typically easier if you're selling uh, an investment property, a second home vacation property than if you're selling your primary residence. So let's move into that. Let's talk about selling for people who have a primary residence and then moving into their next home, whether that be a house hack, whether that be a downsize or upsize. What does setting the stage for the seller look like so that way they can successfully sell their house to make that next move? Yeah, so we're seeing sellers say, I'm not going to sell my house unless I have my replacement property lined up. So do I put my mark my house on the market first and hope to get someone under contract in order to make my offer stronger on my replacement property? Or do I list my property once my replacement property is identified? Mm -hmm. And then I work backwards. So that's where it's been a little bit tricky lately because every situation is so different mm -hmm. and you just want to make sure that you have the right team in place to facilitate either type of transaction. Now, I will say it's a lot harder to get your offer accepted if you are contingent upon selling your house and your house is not on the market at all. Yeah. If you are in dreamland saying, oh, it will be on the market. Those sellers of the home that you want to buy are not going to want to accept your offer. They'd rather accept the offer down the street from someone who doesn't need to sell their house and can mm -hmm. close within three or four weeks. Right. Just put yourself in the shoes of the seller in that situation. Uh, you're the seller and you've got two offers on the table. One is contingent upon a house selling that's not on the market. And the other is not contingent. It's just conventionally financed or maybe even all cash. Which offer would you choose? <laughs> and, and reality is the seller is probably going to choose the non-contingent offer or the cash offer just because there's less risk to them. It's more of a sure thing. And so that's why when it comes to contingent offers, it's very important you either have that house listed for sale with a buyer locked in on it, or you have a, a motivated seller who's willing to accept an offer before you've even listed it. And so we've done both. And typically, if you have your house listed for sale, it's going to put you in a better position to get your offer accepted contingent upon selling. And so we've done both, but you're really going to need to sit down and make a game plan for both of those options to see which one works best for you. Yeah. And even if a seller had two offers that were both contingent upon the sale of a property, a seller is so much more likely to accept the contingent offer for the house that's either listed or already under contract with a buyer. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you know for a fact that yes, I am moving. I'm going to list my house anyway, and I'm going to start shopping. And the good news is you're protected as a seller. You are not going to end up selling your house if you don't find that replacement property. So that's where you have a contingency mm -hmm. on either side, right? I can only buy this house contingent upon me selling, and I can only sell my house contingent upon me buying this property. So you're actually in a really good place as a seller who is in that contingency period, so long as your offer does get accepted. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, you're well protected with the contingencies that we put in those contracts. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's that's a pretty typical situation we're seeing right now. The other type of situations we're seeing are people who want investment properties and they are looking to maybe move their duplex, right? And upsize into a fourplex. And they want to sell one investment in order to buy another investment. Um, and so then what does that look like, right? Those are the conversations mm -hmm. that we're having with, with some of our investor clients today too. Yeah. So it really just depends on what exactly you're looking for in your upcoming sale. Are you mm -hmm. looking to cash out completely? Are you looking to upsize your primary residence or are you looking to just exchange mm -hmm. maybe into a new property too? Because mm -hmm. that's another another layer that we're seeing sellers explore right now. Definitely. Now, let's say you've, you've made the game plan, you're going to sell, you know it. Now it comes down to pricing. How do you price it well? 
And, and what we know is that price is not determined by you, by your neighbor, by what Zillow says, by what an a- agent down Definitely the street says. Definitely not what Zillow says. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> price is determined by what a buyer is willing to pay and by what a seller is willing to sell for in today's market conditions. So it's always going to fluctuate. It's always going to change. And uh, this is something that's kind of a sensitive topic for people because off, obviously you want the highest price possible. And the buyer, they want to try to get it at the lowest price possible. And the reality is we, when we sell a house, we have to sell it twice. Mm-hmm. First, we have to sell it to the buyer on the front end just to get them to believe that that value is there. And then second, you have to sell it to an appraiser because most of the time buyers are getting financing. And so the appraiser is going to come out. The bank's going to say, I want to know the value. And the appraiser has to go out and look at comparable sales to say, yes, this property is at value. So we have to make sure we're looking at comparable sales when pricing property realistically. So that way we can help your property sell and not sit on the market month after month after month chasing down the price. Right. Something that we share a lot with our clients, especially our clients who are selling their primary residence, is we understand that there's so much sentimental value in that home. They've lived in for maybe 20, 30 years. There are family memories. There's Mm -hmm. special furniture. There's art and photos on the wall. Rooms painted. Rooms painted. Yeah. So there's so much sentimental value that the seller has. But the sad reality is that the buyers aren't going to see that. The buyers aren't going to care. They are going to nickel and dime you (laughs) wanting the concessions, wanting to get the best price possible. So as a seller, if you are really motivated to sell, it's time to start turning your home into a sellable asset. Mm -hmm. And that means neutralizing your property. That means taking down your family photos so that way another buyer can walk in Mm -hmm. and visualize their own family photos on the wall. That means maybe repainting to a different color that's a more neutral color rather than a bright color that your child painted (laughs) when they were eight years old. So it, it is emotional in that aspect and we have to keep the goal at front and center. Mm -hmm. in order for it to be successful. We don't want you to have to go through an unnecessary wave of emotions and emotional roller coaster if we can mitigate it on the front end by Mm -hmm. setting those realistic expectations up front. Definitely. And another thing we like to tell our sellers that we're working with is, look, we can't control the market. Uh, You can't control interest rates. You can't control the economy. You can't control geopolitics, what's going on around the world. You can't control your neighbor or if they list their house or what price they list it for. There's only three things in your power that you get to control when it comes to selling your house at the end of the day. Number one is the realtor you choose and hiring the right person for the job is so important. Number two is the price that you choose to set on your property. And then number three is how the condition of your home looks and how accessible and easy it is to show that property. Right. And that's a big factor because if we don't have access to a home, buyers are going to lose interest. Days on market are going to increase and a buyer is going to say, oh, this home has been on market for a month. Why is it still available? It looks great. It's priced well. Well, maybe the seller just hasn't granted access for buyers to come in and what buyer is going to want to write an offer without seeing the house first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I remember there was a time in the past where uh, a seller didn't want us to show the property yeah. <laughs> unless we got a signed offer. Yeah. And, and it felt like our hands were tied because we were, you know, marketing the property, doing as much as we could online. And it was very difficult to procure an offer prior to showing a property. If I can't show a property, I can't sell a property. And Fortunately, we were still able to procure eight offers on that listing and get it sold. So uh, there's But still, it took a year. It took a year. <laughs> it was 10 months. It was a very long process. But if it's easy to show, it's easy to sell. And so making your property accessible for buyers, for agents to go through is going to go a long way. Yeah, that's so, so important. So even though 
having buyers in your home might be uncomfortable because you have to move your dogs. You need to make sure the house is sparkling clean. Turn the, the lights on. Yeah, turn the lights on. Open Every, the windows. Yeah, everything you have to do to prep for buyers mm -hmm. to come in, it is a lot of work. But the sooner we do it on the front end, the faster the home will sell. So mm -hmm. if you just schedule, you know, the first week or two with just back to back showings, open houses, get as many people in the door as mm -hmm. possible, you will be set apart as a seller. Right. And we see on average for every four to five showings that take place on home, you should expect to see one offer. So if you can just stack all your showings that take place within that first week or two on market, you should be getting at least a few offers. Yeah, And if you have no offers, but you've had five, 10, 15 showings, the market is telling you that the property is overpriced and it doesn't mean you did something wrong. It just means, okay, let's look at the data. The data shows us that this is above fair market value. We need to adjust the price to get it back into the range where buyers are willing to put in an offer on that property. Exactly. Exactly. So it's really important that you are trusting the agent that you hire on the front end. Mm -hmm. That's critical to help guide you through the market, to paint the picture. Here is what is going on in the market. Here's where we're seeing sellers have the most success. Here's where we recommend pricing, staging, mm, repairs, repairs. If the property's not in good condition. Uh, you, you may want to do an as is sale. But if you do, that means you have to price it probably a little bit less yep. to accommodate yep. for those repairs or do the repairs yourself to try to get that higher value. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So we we really recommend that you are trusting the agent that you work with. Mm -hmm. Interview a few. Find out what their past sales track record has been. Find out what they would do to be honest with you and not just tell you what you want to hear. Right. But truly give constructive feedback in order to turn your home into that sellable asset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have an agent tell you what you want to hear. Like, oh yeah, I can get you a million dollars for sure. Oh, I believe it. But if the comps are really coming in at 800,000, uh, you may want to double check that agent and, and get a second opinion because uh, that's something that's so important is we are going to be honest and shoot you straight and tell you the truth about what the market is telling us. We're not going to just try to, it's called buying a listing mm -hmm. when you list it at a higher price than what the market actually supports. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so we really just want to leave you with who you work with matters. At the end of the day, it always, always matters who mm -hmm. you end up partnering with. Trust who you partner with believe that they will guide you on the best path forward to reach your real estate goals and also do your part communicating very well with your agent mm -hmm. about what exactly you're yes. looking for in a sale. If you need to net a certain number and the market isn't showing you that you will net that, then maybe it's not the right time to sell. And you need to trust that your agent is interpreting the market in a way that clearly shows you what your walkaway number is mm -hmm. going to be. Definitely. So uh, another thing is just the, the emotional roller coaster that you may experience on this real estate journey. A good agent is going to help you navigate that because there may be a high of, we got lots of offers to a low, all the offers backed out. <laughs> and you just have to be ready for that. It's all part of the process. The high of, oh, we got an offer accepted to the low of, oh, they did an inspection and they want a new roof. <laughs> so you have to be ready for these things and be nimble and ready to adapt because it's not over till it's over in real estate. And so you want to be ready to uh, make a deal happen so that you can achieve that goal of selling and making that move happen. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who's considering making a move, especially if you're in San Luis Obispo County where we are, we'd love to meet you. And we'd love to sit down for a free consultation to walk you through what selling in today's market looks like. And if you are outside of this county and in a different area, we'd be happy to connect you with someone we know who would do a great job helping facilitate a sale or just even exploring what it looks like to make a move. We have resources available on our website. Um, I think we'll have a link in the show notes for that. And we'd be more than happy to answer any questions for you about selling in today's market. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. <laughs>